Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a winter cozy reading vlog. So we will be reading three different cozy mysteries. I'm very excited. I have two that I actually own and one that I checked out for my library. Two of these are newer releases. One is a backlisted one and we're just going to hop into these synopses real quick and then hop into the vlog. So the first one I actually just started last night. I'm about 50 pages in so I'll give you a quick update on how it's going so far. And this is part of the Tita Rossi's Kitchen Mystery Series by Mia P. Manansala. I love this mystery series. It is excellent. The first book in it is Arsenic and Adobo and this one is called Murder and Maman. Maman according to the book is like a Filipino chiffon cake but that like served in like I think like a little individual kind of like instead of like a big cake that you would slice into it's like little individual cakes. Not quite a cupcake but like little tiny cakes like individual serving cakes. Sounds super delicious, sounds lovely and we have her Dosh Hound here on the cover which is darling. I'm just covering up my library's name so excuse that but I love this book. Oh, I love this series. I'm so excited to be reading it again. So our main character in this is Leela and she has three like godmothers April, May, and June which I think I, I love that. Makes it really easy to remember. May is spelled M-A-E but such a fun way and they're actually about to launch like the opening of their laundromat. It's during the spring cleaning event so this is a little outside the winter one. The other two are definitely more wintry, but this one is edging into spring cleaning, which I kind of associate with winter as well, but you know, let me know when you do spring cleaning if you do it at all. But this one is really fun, so the laundromat is being opened, but they start to have this like vandalism happening to the laundromat, and Leela thinks that maybe her godmothers have stuck their nose places they shouldn't have because her godmothers are known to be kind of gossips, they're a little bit of busybodies, they kind of put their noses in people's business that's not always appreciated. So unfortunately their business is already being met with some controversy, there's some vandalism going on, and then somebody is actually found murdered in the laundromat, which of course delays opening <laughs> among other issues. So about a fifth of the way in, it's flying by, we're already head like first into the murder and everything going on. I'm really really intrigued by some of the maybe family secrets or things that might be coming out in this and the food descriptions. Oh my goodness. This next one is extra special because one of you actually sent it to me and I just want to say thank you again Bethany. I so appreciate it. Hopefully you got the little thank you um message but I just wanted to say thank you again and this is Public Anchovy number one A Deep Dish Mystery by Mindy Quigley. This is book three in the series. It came out just after Christmas so it is a newer release and this might just be the one I'm most excited for in the whole series. I've read book one and two and I absolutely adored them but the tropes for this one Oh my goodness. Our main character is Delilah O'Leary. She lives in Upper Wisconsin and she has a deep dish pizzeria and she's just a delightful character. I really really love her. She's quite headstrong. She's very take charge and I love it. And in this one she's actually going to be catering a prohibition themed party because the town she lives in has a lot of like mob history to it which I think is an interesting component. So at this isolated mansion she is catering and she's hoping to kind of fight off the winter slow season and the temperatures outside are plummeting and she and her team are actually kind of cut off there along with Capone who is the detective that she kind of has a little bit of a burgeoning relationship with or it's kind of like it, it's it's getting there maybe I don't know we'll see but they get trapped at this mansion somebody dies and I cannot wait also the cat in the series and then last but not least, this is one that I got at a library book sale a while ago and I've been holding on to it for a winter reading vlog and that is Thread on Arrival, a mainly needlepoint mystery by Leah Waite. And as you can see, this cover is the epitome of a cozy winter read. So there are quite a few mysteries that are had previously come out in this series. I haven't read those, so I am jumping in a little bit blind, but I think most cozy mystery series you can kind of jump into. So our main character in this is Angie and alongside her friend Sarah they're going to be celebrating the Blessing of the Fleets which is a 
maybe celebrating is not the right word, but they're going to be honoring the Blessing of the Fleets, which is a ceremony that they do every year in town to honor people who were lost at sea, because they do live in a coastal New England town, which is a setting I'm very interested in. And one of the residents in town has really been hitting hard times recently, and his name is Ike, and he has been relying on disability checks and deposit bottles. He's really been having a hard time, but a lot of locals, including Angie and Sarah, have been helping him as much as they can. Unfortunately, he has found stabbed to death, and a teenage boy in the area is accused of this, and Angie just cannot believe that this boy had anything to do with it, so she gets involved in the case. So I'm very curious about this. Let me know if you have read this series. I haven't personally really heard of it before finding this at my library book sale. There's two adorable cats on the cover, which is always a good sign, and this cover just looks absolutely so cozy and cute and wintry, so I had to include it for this vlog. So I have been reading Murder and Maman, a, a Tita Rossi's Kitchen Mystery series, and I am really loving this, which I expected because this is a series that I adore. The first three books have been knockouts for me. I am, I'd say about almost halfway. We're like maybe 40% of the way into the book. I read some more of this last night and it's going really well. I just enjoy Leela as a main character so much. I'm interested in learning more about her godmothers. It's really bringing out the different nuances in their personality because in the first three books they're really kind of they're really kind of viewed as a trio. You know, you kind of almost view them as a set because they're always together, but this one you're really seeing the nuances of their different personalities, which I like. There has been some really interesting scenes with this, interesting clues. I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, not a whole lot to say other than it's it's fast paced, the characters are amazing as always. There's ar already been some delicious food descriptions which has been making me very hungry and I just can't wait to see how this one ends because I really don't have a good clue at who did it right now. Like my brain is like, I don't know, like I really don't have a solid idea yet. So we're gonna see how that goes. I will give you guys an update on this in a little bit. I did wanna say a very big thank you, I received um, these two books in the mail actually today from one of you guys and I didn't see a, a note on it that had like a URL where I could like send a direct like thank you like the other one so I did just want to say thank you so much Tammy for sending these to me I'm genuinely so excited your note was so kind I really really appreciate it this is a spoon to be dead a shake shop mystery by Dana Mentink which is a series I have adored the first two books in and this is the newest release I think it came out like November, December, and then A Trip with Trouble from the Mountain Lodge Mystery Series by Diane Kelly. I recently read book one in this series and it was fabulous. Like, I really, really loved it. So I cannot wait to dive into a book two. I think I'm going to try to read this one very soon because it is more wintry and Christmassy and we're kind of getting out of that season. And then this one I'm just going to probably read before autumn because I won't be able to wait. So thank you so much. Truly, absolutely so kind, made me tear up, made my day, so thank you so much for that. And I will see you guys with an update very soon.
It's super late, but I just wanted to pop in here and say that I did finish Murder and Maman by Mia P. Man and Sala. Excellent. Like, probably 4.5 star read for me. I really enjoyed it. The ending completely got me. I was convinced I had a suspect, I had somebody in mind, and then they proved to be a very good red herring. So, very excited. This was an excellent ending. I'm really excited to see where Leela is going to be continuing on with, like, her character development. I love her friends and her Bruja Cafe. They are just amazing amazing characters, all very interesting. I love seeing her growing relationship with some people in her family who she maybe wasn't as close to growing up, like her cousin Bernadette. Really enjoying that. Her relationship with her boyfriend is very sweet, and the food descriptions top-notch as always. Absolutely delicious. I so want to try this chiffon cake, the maman, so badly after reading this series, and she also has an adorable Dosh Hound here who is amazing. I really loved the conclusion for the godmothers and kind of seeing them and their personalities kind of come out more on an individual level throughout this book. Like I said, they're usually kind of looked at as a trio. So it was really, really a good read. Very, very quick because it was only like 200 and like 50 pages basically. There's like an excerpt from the next book that's coming out in November. Very, very excited. And then some recipes as well. So I am so excited to read that. That's definitely going to make a most anticipated release video for me later on this year. I'm so excited. I highly recommend the series. I really do enjoy it. I know that I had hopped on actually a like a cozy mystery uh, reading sprint with Tiffany from Beachbound Bookworm and some other YouTubers, some who are new to me. I just subscribed. I'm very excited. And I had done some of reading and it actually lined up really well with this because it was a pink prompt for like anything with pink on the cover and this clearly clearly fits the bill with the pink there and this book actually came up in discussion because I wasn't the only one reading this for that reading sprint since it is such a good pink choice and I know some of them had expressed saying that you know they they were a little hesitant with this series in general because it does cover some deeper issues which is totally true I know like the second book I think actually did have some trigger warnings it wasn't for there's no like true like on-screen violence or anything like that there's nothing that isn't um I don't know a better word but like the any romance it's very like clean it's very you know it's more about the characters like growth within the relationship maybe a very brief kiss or something like that nothing graphic in that sense but it does go into some deeper issues occasionally like mental health or um unfortunately Again, and this is something I think the author, I guess, has discussed about how there is a lot of um, body shaming within the Filipino community. That's kind of how a lot of people are raised, where they receive a lot of comments about their body, which is, of course, not okay, you know, especially when you're not, you know, the comments aren't made in a way that's like, you know, helping, like asking a person if, if they can be helpful, maybe if they're trying to improve their health or something like that, but it's more just a put down sense, which is horrible. And certainly there is a little bit of that throughout the series, so you know, keep that in mind if that's something, if, if you like your cozies to be very, very cozy. But if you don't mind a cozy that has a little bit more of those deeper issues in, like involved, or if you actually enjoy that like I do, I think you'll love the series. It's handled very tactfully and it's really, really well done and I really just love it. It's so family-centric, truly an amazing, just family-driven cozy mystery series. I love her and her family. I'm getting so attached to them. The food descriptions are incredible. The mysteries are always really on point for me and I only solve them like half the time. The other half the time they completely have me stumped. Like this one where I was just shocked at the very like last minute. So I really recommend this series. I thought it was such a good read and I'm so excited. The next one I'm going to be reading is Public Anchovy. We're going to dive into that because... I just am so excited for that book. I'm so excited. I absolutely love it with the tropes with that one. So that's what I'm going to start reading before bed tonight. And I will give you guys an update in the morning. See you then.
Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you a quick reading update. So I did finish Public Anchovy Number 1 by Mindy Quigley and this was a knockout. Not only was the ending so stunning, I had no idea who did it. It was such a surprising, shocking, and interesting reveal. And much like book two, which I loved so much from the series, the kind of final clue that like exposed the like who behind everything was so clever and just amazing. I really, really appreciated it. I loved the ending for this. I love what's happening with Delaney and kind of her life and some of the subplots that are developing. I absolutely love that. I love how her family is very stubborn. Like her and her Aunt Biz are very stubborn individuals. Like there's a kind of saying in their family how O'Leary women don't cry and they bake each other pies. They never say sorry, but they bake each other pies as like a apology basically, which I'm not sure if that's totally healthy at all times but I like it it's it's very realistic you know I do know people who are kind of like that so I really like it I loved Delaney as a character I loved the butterball content with this oh my goodness this cat is clear is easily one of my favorite cozy mystery sidekick pet characters absolutely and I, I'm just the more I get to know her the more I love Sonia as a character which is her like sous chef and I'm just loving it so I cannot wait for this this book was an absolute hit thank you again Bethany and I would highly recommend this book along with the whole series. I've really, really enjoyed it. Now, I did start Thread on Arrival, a mainly needlepoint mystery by Leah Waite, and right now I am 100 and... I'm on chapter 20, 130 pages basically, and so I am getting close to the halfway point, and... I am really pleasantly surprised with how much I'm enjoying this. So our main character in this is Angie and she's a very empathetic woman. She is very involved in her community. She's about 28. She's actually celebrating a birthday in this book and she does like a needlepoint business. So she's constantly making the rounds with some of her friends and people who do needlepoint, picking up orders, delivering orders. Very interesting business, something I'm not really familiar with, but I really admire the artwork and the craft behind it because it's, I can't even... I have nowhere near the patience to needlepoint, but it's absolutely beautiful results. And wow, not only if you like cats will you like this series because there's plenty of beautiful furry friend references in this with the cute cats we have here. I think this one is Trixie, I want to say. I think this is her grandmother's cat, if I want to say that correctly. But basically in this we have Ike Hamilton and he's a man around town who's just always been kind of down on his luck. He does get some like social security checks, but to supplement his income, he collects bottles around town and then he gets like the little deposit for each bottle and so a lot of people around town will leave bottles like different businesses and neighbors and stuff will leave bottles for him to collect and then he can recycle them and get that cash back to kind of help supplement his income. Well recently he's had this young man named Leo with him who's a teen boy and he's been helping Ike and then basically Ike is found dead, Leo is a primary suspect, and Angie and some of her friends are helping him out because they don't believe he did it, even though it's not looking great for him. Not only is Leo's story really touching, like the more that comes out about him, the more I'm just like, my heart is going out to this poor young man. There's just so many things that felt like stacked against him, but I just love the camaraderie in this series. I love the feline references, the needlepoint tidbits are enough to be very interesting to like help me learn a little bit more about it but not too over the top if you're like me and maybe it's not like a passion of yours to hear about needlepoint i'm loving the setting there's a lot about the ocean and the sea and like even the starting scenes for this book are like this commemorative service that they do every year where they list off all the lives over the years that have been lost at sea like doing fishing, lobstering, all the different types of work out there that can be quite dangerous. So I found that to be very interesting because it's something I've never thought about. As someone who lives in the southwest, it's not, you know, there's not exactly like a bunch of oceans here that we're going out for lobsters and stuff on, but I just find it to be very interesting. I'm really, really enjoying this mystery. I don't have a solid idea yet on who did it. Actually, I actually have one suspect, but we'll see. We'll see. But I'm really flying through this. The writing is really easy to consume. It's really, really well written. I really think, I really feel like the dialogue in this is very natural. Sometimes dialogue can be like maybe a little bit over the top or corny in Cozy Mysteries and this dialogue feels very natural. It feels really good. It deals with some harder topics, especially with Leo's past, but it's still cozy. It's still comforting. It's still a great read. The mystery is really good so far. So I will give you guys an update when I'm done with this. I'm expecting to hopefully finish it before bed. 
However, before we check out, I do did pick up a few books from my library, including some cozy mysteries and a couple thrillers, so I thought I'd go through those real quick with you. Okay, so this next one has been on my TBR to start this series for a while, and this is the Record Shop Mystery Series by Olivia Black. This one's called Vinyl Resting Place, and it actually involves a trio of sisters who open it, which I love. I love a good family business and a cozy mystery. I think it's just adds extra coziness. I love learning about the family, the dynamics, all of that. And I have read one book by Olivia Black before. It was her killer content book, and it was like a Brooklyn mystery, I want to say. I didn't love it. I actually ended up DNFing it. But this one sounds like it's such... It's a later book of hers, and it just sounds like something I would love, so I want to give her another shot because the series sounds amazing. So essentially, our main character is Junie Jessup, and her and her two sisters are opening this record shop, part coffee shop. So we got two great elements going on there. We have the really unique record shop element and then a coffee shop, which is always so cozy. And her and her sisters, they're just getting ready to open the place when they find a body in the supply closet, which obviously was not part of the agreement when they bought the place or started renting it. That was not supposed to be there. Unfortunately, their uncle is a suspect and he actually ends up fleeing and now they're left trying to pick up the pieces, salvage their business's reputation, find out what happened, clear their uncle's name and all this other drama. There's also a really adorable little orange cat here. I'm just covering my library's name so ignore that, but really cute little orange cat. So I'm really excited to give this a try. Let me know if you've tried this series. An absolute classic in the cozy mystery world is the Bake Shop Mystery Series by Ellie Alexander. This is her book, Bake, Borrow, and Steal, and I am personally so excited for this. So this is book 14 in the series. I think there's at least 18 or 19, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch up on this. But basically our main character is Jules, and she lives in Ashland, Oregon. She helps her mom run the Bake Shop Tort, which is their family business. She's got a lot of great employees. They all have subplots. I would strongly recommend reading this series in order. A lot of cozies you can kind of jump in, but this one... I would really read in order. Above all else, please read this one in order. But basically for this one, she's actually preparing an authentic Shakespearean feast. There's a ton of Shakespeare elements in Ashland, Oregon. It's a big thing. They do a lot of theater and plays and stuff. And she's preparing this authentic feast to celebrate this um, like manuscript that has been found and like authenticated. But the manuscript goes missing on the big night and then Jules gets involved in the crime. It is an autumn cozy mystery. You can kind of see the beautiful like trees and foliage in the background, but I'm going to go ahead and read this. I want to really catch up with this series, so I'm very excited. Next one is The Time for Murder is Meow, a Purr and Bark Pet Shop Mystery by T.C. Lotempio. So I was talking in my March cozy mystery release video, which I'll link above if it's not already. I will link that but basically the fourth or fifth book in that series was coming out and I was like, wow, I need to read that because I loved the first book in the Tiffany Austin Food Blogger series by this same author, but I've never read their other series. And how cute is this cover? I mean, come on. Okay, so for starters, her Siamese cat is named Kalua and her aunt's Persian is named Purdy. Come on, that's just so cute. So our main character, Shell, she's actually kind of relieved when her TV show is not renewed. It's actually canceled. She actually is like, you know what? I'm going to go to my aunt's pet shop. I'm going to help her out with the place. And while she's there, she ends up donating some of her aunt's, like, Cary Grant photo like photos or posters to a museum. But the person who didn't want to accept them is actually found dead later, and she's the number one suspect in the case. So I'm very excited for this. It's a pet shop mystery. I've never read a pet shop mystery before, and I love pets, so this seems right up my alley. So this is a thriller I was actually super excited for. It was on my most anticipated thriller releases for the beginning of the year. I'll link it above if you're curious, but it's called Keep Your Friends Close by Leah Conan. And I love the cover, very like deadly, but our main character is Mary and she is going through a divorce, she's going through a very messy custody battle, and one night she goes out and she meets this woman named Willow, and with the help of a few drinks, she starts to spill her guts to Willow about her divorce and all the stuff that's happening. Fast forward a few months later, she has moved and she runs into Willow again, except Willow insists that her name is Anne, and she also has a whole new family with her. Really weird. And then Mary's ex ends up dying. And she starts to suspect, did Willa have something to do with it? Very, very interesting premise. I'm very excited for this. It sounds very gripping. See, we have two more thrillers and a cozy. The next thriller is The Perfect Escape, A Girl's Weekend to Die For by Leah Conan. Oh, I didn't even realize the same author. <laughs> 
Um, but this one sounds really fun. So basically, this is kind of like a friend drama. We have three girlfriends, and they are leaving on a trip together for the city. They're all dealing with messy, like, issues with their partners. Like, some of them are exes, divorces, etc. And they're just wanting to escape for a girls' weekend, right? However, they get stranded in like a small mountainous town that's really remote and then one of them goes missing and all of their secrets start to come out. Very excited. This sounds right up my alley. I love a good like friendship drama. So I'm very excited for this. This next one I'm very curious about. It's supposed to have a lot of British humor. I'm not sure if that'll suit me very well because I don't know how much I like dry humor, but we're going to see. And this is by Ian Moore. It's called Death and Croissants. And basically our main character is Richard. He's a middle-aged Englishman and he runs a B&B, like a bed and breakfast. And one day, one of his older guests disappears, leaving a bloody handprint behind, which is concerning. And then one of his more, um, she's described as the exotic Valerie, persuades him to join her in the investigation. While they're investigating, one of his beloved hens, like chickens, is murdered and he is like you don't mess with the fellow's hens so he gets involved in the case i don't know it's supposed to be very like kooky very humorous mystery so i'm not sure it's a little outside of my typical reading sphere but i'm very excited to try it out this next one is called careful what you wish for by Haley efron and i'm excited for this it's a kind of a thriller mystery combo and basically let's see our main character's name she is emily and she is a professional organizer she had a video of her organizing a sock drawer go viral and then she launched that into a professional career the interesting thing is is that when she meets with couples who are going through this process she always advises them to let their spouse declutter their own things and they stick to their own things right and then maybe come together on like mutual items however the problem is is that her own husband is somebody who can't drive by a yard sale without picking up a bunch of stuff and he calls himself a collector, but he's actually more of a hoarder. Like, he's taken over the basement. It's getting really bad. Well, recently she's been helping two new clients. One who's an older woman whose husband left her a mysterious storage unit she had nothing to know about. And then one who's a young wife. And during her time with the younger wife, she and her drink some wine. And they start to fantasize about how much easier life would be without their husbands. Which is really terrible. Really, really awful. Um... But the premise of careful what you wish for leads me to think that maybe something happens to their husbands. I don't know, but I'm very intrigued by this. I like the premise of the careful what you wish for mentality. And that is everything for now. So I will give you guys a final update on Thread of Arrival once I finish reading this in the morning. And that's pretty much it for this vlog. So final update for this Thread on Arrival. Leah, wait. I loved it. I loved it. I did figure out the ending, but it was a very strong ending, very nail-biting, very tense, and just the coziness of this at the same time was so good. I liked learning a little bit more about Needlepoint. I loved the beautiful snowy setting of Bane. I liked learning more about, like, just all the fish and the lobster and everything like that. It just sounds so lovely because I live in the Southwest, so I'm not exactly... I don't really have good access to like lobster or seafood like that um, typically, but I just loved learning about that. I thought this was a really fun book. It's inspired me to go back and read the other books in the series. I really want to read it now from like the first book on. I think this is book five. And just following the, um, the teenager's story throughout this was really touching. It was interesting to see how his past and everything like led him here. And it just, oh, it was good. It was really good. I think the less I say it, the better, but this was definitely a strong read, a really great way to end this vlog. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do post new mystery content, especially cozy mysteries, all the way up to like thrillers every week on my channel. So if you like anything having to do with mysteries, you'll find something on my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video.